I'm Ambassador Ibrahim Rasul, former Ambassador of South Africa to the United States of America, founder of the World for All Foundation, and currently scholar in residence at Georgetown University. I was a hidden treasure, and I loved to be known, so I created the world. Thus spoke God through the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace, elevating the world to more than a mere creation of God. The earth, in fact, is one of the greatest manifestations of God, deserving not only our care, but indeed our reverence. As in all beings, harmony, order, and sustainability are maintained through balance and measure. The Quran declares in the chapter named for the first attribute of God, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. The Quran declares, God has raised the heavens and established the balance to maintain it. So do not transgress the balance. Maintain due measure and do not fall short in the balance. For God has created the earth for all creation. This evening, we gather as a community of believers those descendants of Abraham who rallied to the visit of a Pope, Francis, named for the patron saint of the natural world, together with those descendants who only yesterday celebrated Yom Kippur, dramatizing the constant search of humanity for redemption. Today, Muslims across the world celebrate Eid al-Adha, the festival of sacrifice, and through our devotions, we join the millions of pilgrims who only yesterday pledged to God their commitment to renewal of themselves and of the world. This moment of convergence cannot be accidental. Our convergence is precisely because today, in a triple crisis besetting the world, economic scene in the poverty and the inequality and the greed, Human, in our fear of difference and the plethora of phobias and isms that we invent to define the other, and environment manifested in floods and hurricanes on one side and droughts and fires on the other side. Our faith is challenged by these triple crises, but for our faith to respond, we need to transcend faith's own crisis, the crisis of relevance in a skeptical world, the crisis of its own fragmentation, wherever we see the opportunity for difference, we seize it, the crisis of the inertia of our orthodoxy, and the crisis at the hand of each of our extremists. However, faith does not have Faith does not have the luxury to go into the intensive care unit and heal itself. Faith has to be rehabilitated even, it has, even as it has to rally the faithful to action. In fact, it is only through fighting the good fight that faith can rehabilitate itself, heal itself, and advance itself. Already, the encyclical on climate change of Pope Francis has provided more commitment and resolve than a thousand scientific papers. Already the Islamic declaration on climate change has shown more courage in urging Muslims to envision a post-oil world so that carbons don't irrevocably destroy our environment. Faith is finding its voice and today we must commit that every leader of every country who goes to Paris for COP21 in two months' time will be aware that they must choose in favor of their finest values and not their pettiest interests, and that they must choose and that they must choose in the decisions they make the people who sent them and not the lobbyists who pay them. 